Okay, our next public hearing item is a consideration to amend section 1301 of the Conway Zoning Vote as it <coughs> pertains to the sign code. I'm sorry, you guys are getting, you're getting a dose of what some of my my clients used to get. <laughs> it, was, it was usually there was about a 15 minute agenda then a 45 minute James time. Um, so it yeah, kind floor. of became a joke. Uh, so this, um, this whole project started back in 2020. Um, we had taken, I had uh, been asked to take a look at the, the sign code as it related to some, some requirements. We knew that based on uh, one of the Supreme Court cases that had come out, Gilbert v. Reed, that uh, the, the sign code is likely not uh, compliant, or Reed v. Gilbert. And so the, the council had asked me to take a look. I'd taken sort of a, a review of that uh, to the council. Uh, following that, they had asked that we kind of take a, basically undertake a, a comprehensive rewrite uh, in terms of that because there's so many issues that had been identified with the, the existing code. So uh, there was a, a small task force that was uh, put together, included the, the mayor's office, representatives from the mayor's office, city attorney's office, uh, council member Grimes. Um, Brandon Rule was represented on that before uh, he ended up rolling off. Um, and so this is, uh, gone through a substantial amount of time um, that it's, it's been, <laughs> been a long time uh, in terms of in terms of writing it but I'll just kind of go through uh, sort of all of the the major changes in the code uh, what they represent and then um, you can ask questions or ask questions as I go along um, the the first and foremost one of the things uh, in section 1301 which is um, the sort of the purpose and scope. Uh, that section has been tightened up with a, a stronger purpose and goals to establish the reasoning for the regulations. Uh, that's done in, in part to provide a, a stronger legal basis for the regulations if they're, if they're challenged in court. Uh, those primarily relate to the, the safety of persons and property uh, for signs, promote efficient transfer of uh, information and sign messages. Um, protecting the public welfare and enhance the appearance and economy of the city by providing uh, attractive signage. Um, those are those are the three, and then there's uh, three key areas, and then there's twenty some odd other uh, goals that it's that it's designed to achieve. So that's really in that section, that that whole area was was rewritten really to make it a little bit uh, a little bit stronger. In thirteen o two. Uh, this is general provisions and standards. So this is, uh, provides the uh, processes of permitting standards uh, and then standards that are generally applicable regardless of the, the zoning district. Um, first and foremost, uh, in the existing ordinance, billboards are capped uh, at uh, 32 maximum inside the city. Uh, this changes it to where uh, there would be no more billboards. So if, uh, for instance, if a billboard uh, falls down or it's destroyed, it couldn't be replaced. So it, got, it changes from a cap where the current 32, if one's taken down, it could be put, put somewhere else, it goes to a, a sort of an outright ban. It doesn't mean that they go away. It just means that over time, they will eventually slowly go away as they deteriorate or, or torn down. All right, so clarify. You said ask questions as you went, right? Yes. Okay, so clarify. I, I thought I heard you say both things, that if one is destroyed, that it would not be rebuilt, but that Correct. it could go elsewhere? No, that's that's under current the current regulations. So okay. under the current regulations with a cap, if you tore one down, it could be placed somewhere else. In, somewhere else. Got it. And so now we have 32 storm whatever takes, storm James appropriately, right, takes out one of them, it cannot be rebuilt. Correct. We're down to 31 until, okay, got it. Yep. But maintenance mm -hmm. could be still done on existing ones to keep Correct. them yep. up. Uh, the second is uh, dealing with with string lights around windows, uh, where you've seen the, one of the popular areas where you've seen this is like vape shops, um, and that these would be essentially added as a prohibited uh, prohibited illumination method or even a form of signage in and of itself uh, that that would kind of no longer be uh, permitted. Uh, that, wait, residential and commercial, or just commercial? <laughs> is that what you're about to ask? No. Okay. 
Are, are you talking about customary decorations? I'm talking about Christmas rope lights decorations. around people's windows. Like, exactly. Um, so string lights around windows uh, would be prohibited. Residential and commercial. I, I, I know of no instances. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we would go out looking for them in, in residences. But, sure. Uh, but I guess someone could call code enforcement. That's what yeah. I'm getting at. There's a lot of my neighbor. Businesses. It's February, and my neighbors still got their Christmas lights up, and I'm pissed. Uh, That's what I'm getting at. The intent is not to go after decorations. Okay. But someone could call code enforcement, right? I mean, yes or no. What is the? So how's that considered a sign? So what's the purpose of the lights being eliminated? Are they considered a distraction or the the sort of the vape? Just the no, I, I would so say, from the standpoint, they example. they speak for themselves. Um, that would that I mean uh, other than it's a it's an aesthetic concern. Largely. It's a what? Aesthetic concern. It can also because they, they fluctuate in illumination, they're designed integrally to do that, but it oftentimes can cause distraction. But that's it just feels like a major overreach that we're telling people how they can decorate the inside of their businesses. Personally, it, the, the reason it's in there is we've gotten numerous complaints. About yeah, it. that's the, that's the like, reason why. Like, what's numerous? Two or twelve? I do. How many? How many? Of, I, I, I'm like that. I mean, I think that that one a month, two a month, three a month. Okay, one a month. Who polices these? Told him to go. At least twelve months. It's a joint. No, it's, 12, it's a joint effort. Yeah. And how many well, people in Conway? Y'all go look at the sign. Mm -hmm. Seventy thousand. So we're saying that people can't decorate their businesses for Christmas, for Fourth of July. Uh, temporary, you can. Temporary signs are okay, right? It, it, again, this is this is really string light illumination. So it's oh, what this is intended to deal with. Uh, it, as, as clear as it can be, is where it's commonly with vape shops. I hear. I hear you, James. <laughs> But it's obviously not clear if we have this many questions. So while the intent and, and the heart behind it may be, I mean, if our job is to be the first draft, you know, if we have this many questions, kind of feels like we ought to circle that one. String lights? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't have a great recommendation, but it feels like we ought to circle that one as one we could do better with, maybe. I think and, that one can be eliminated. And the interest for me would just be in clarity. I actually I commercially agree with this, like, because I, I can think of a particular vape shop and it was unsightly and made the shopping center not look great. So I would just say the interest would be in clarity. Well, is there something that we could do? I mean, are we just singling out? I mean, I don't have the, anything against anybody that vapes. But is there something or something that has brought this on? Like, are the lights flashing and it's getting into other... The lights flash. Is yeah. it just one particular establishment? Well, these lights no. flash and they're distracting. So. <laughs> 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 I mean, is there a particular... Can that just be dealt with on a... Is or it, do you have repeat... Like, okay, so the complaints that come in, so we're saying we maybe have at least 12 in a calendar year because at least one, one a month. Is it the same... A vendor, or is it multiple? It's, it's vape multiple shop? ones. There's okay. there's one that's very prominent currently okay. that that uh, lot of, has drawn a lot of attention. Okay. If you want feedback, I, I, clarity, just, just clarity. I, I would is love to have any it? any it language like, you all would recommend that, that be included. Yes, I would. I, yeah, I, I would love to clarity. It. Clarity seems like a thing, maybe there. But I would love to find out how I can do that. Well, <laughs> has anybody? <laughs> Has anybody talked to the person who said, hey, can you tone down the lights? It's distracting one person in Conway. I, I also... <laughs> I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I follow that. The, I mean, questions. I heard and agreed with you that this is a pattern. It's not just one vape shop. There, and it's not limited to just vape shops. I, I have personally shops. seen that there are a... There is a pattern in that industry. So... Mm -hmm. um, Tattoo shops? Hair shops? Yeah. Give me a minute to word Smith on clarity on this, and we'll see if we don't get hung up somewhere else. But we're cutting in on your 45 <laughs> that's, minutes. That's, no, so. that's, that sounds good. I have one more question related to that. So what if they started using neon instead of string lights? It'd still be the same bright light. Again, it's the, the way the language is written, it's strong lights. So it's not, it's not <laughs> neon. I know it's not, but what if they're like, okay, we can't do string lights, and they just bling it out with neon, like, you're still going to have the same issue. I, I would or say neon is, is 
I think, a different form of illumination than, than, than string lights. Uh, James, uh, I know you said something about 2020. They told you to look at the sign ordinance. And, and was that was there a demonstrated need, or is it all this stuff that we've consumed? To, to look at the sign ordinance now. I'm sorry? Was there a demonstrated need or is it just all this stuff right now that we're talking about lights and neon and these things? It's just an accumulation of things that have been identified as needing to be addressed over time. So to, to kind ahead. of piggyback on that, so when there has been a complaint, what have we done now? Just said we're working on that, just leave it or have they been asked to? Or have we not we, addressed We, we don't have regulations that relate to it. Okay, so, I so mean, we can't even. Yeah, well, I mean, literally every, anyone could go do it. Will they be grandfathered in as a result no. of this? No. Okay, so um, we jumped down there to the lights, but a festoon, uh, when I looked that up, that's just like flowers and like in an arch. I don't, Is I don't that think a sign? You, you've not made it past point B, have you? We, that's where we stopped. Uh, here, I think. No. I, I, can, I, have, I mean, I, I can go line by line, uh, but. On page four, under 13. Festoon is a, a string of ribbons, tinsel, small flags, or pinwheels. So. That is a good point. Those, an example of I that? think where she's getting this. That, that's something that's currently in the ordinance. Currently that you can have festoon. Correct. A flower or a ribbon. Yeah. Hey, James. I, I think it would be helpful. Um, I, I will be honest. Maybe everybody else has. I've not read the current sign code. I've read the one that was distributed to us, and there clearly has been an incredible amount of work. Would it be possible, unless everybody else has read the current sign code, to get the track changes version of this hey, so we yeah. could understand what the proposal is? Because otherwise, here's what I think is going to happen. We're on point B of page two. We're going to constantly be asking you questions, and it's going to feel... I think we just have a lot of curious questions, a lot of educational, like we just want to know so that we can, you know, do the job that we're supposed to. And so you obviously know this a whole whole lot. And so like I, we don't know what's in the current code versus what's been changed. So it's really hard to have an opinion on this without a little bit of education. So can you help us there? Well, the, the, the primary issue is that the document itself is restructured. So if you looked at a track changes version, it would it would look like every single line is being changed. Because there's virtually all of it is either moved or restructured in some format, so it's it's really really exceedingly difficult to to essentially I start I started down that path and I, I realized even if I detailed every single minor change, it was going to end up being about forty five pages worth of stuff, and so I said nobody's going to read that, um, you know, because we've got a, an ordinance of. It's 30, 30 pages, and so it's it's so it's so detailed that it seemed like it was a better approach to lay out the major changes, uh, the, the major things in the ordinance. Yeah. Where's she? And are these just on like major corridors? Because I'm just wondering, like one of them says inflatable signs and activated graphics. Well, I'm trying to think. I know, like around the Fourth of July and other holidays. I mean, you have it's the inflatable. Santa's Are you talking about that man that flops up the man and down with the hair? With the, you know? <laughs> that so, would be a temporary sign. Is that temp that so that wear. wouldn't. No, it's a it's a prohibited sign. It can't be done at all ever. Yeah. What is okay? Never mind. So okay. so then, I just help me understand. There's no track changes version. So what input have we gotten up to this point? In terms of in terms of input. Yeah, like was it's there been, like the uh, on the tree the code. Office. There, on the tree code, there was a committee of five. So who kind of was on this committee to rewrite the sign code? It was represented by the mayor's office, city attorney's office, and, and council member Grimes. But nobody really from the public? No. Okay. Got it. With you. Thank you. I see two sign companies, the Burtons and Mr. Whitehouse. Were they represented on this? Uh, no. I'm I'm following with Rebecca here. Of I'm, I'm I'm in a weird place because I know there are some things in proposed that I have questions about. I would like to see differently. I think a lot of us would like to spend more time with this. So we're likely going to end up with me to table it. But I'd also like to hear from 
and professionals in the room. But I don't know if, if we can do that if until you, it's if, if if I could be so demanding as to just ask to be able to go through the the, yeah. the remainder of the, Absolutely. the changes just for educational purposes yeah. for anybody that's out there. Absolutely. So then maybe we just won't ask questions and we'll listen. How about that? Yeah. Sounds so great. like yeah, yeah, because I think we we got a lot of questions and we, <laughs> we're, we're gonna make our, you we're gonna make your ears red, James. When will our well, questions get answered then? Yeah. What? When will our questions get answered? We're gonna figure at that the, out. At the end. That's why you're chair. Well, I'm gonna, <laughs> well then I'm asking questions now okay. as you go. Uh, okay. No, I mean it, 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 it's, it's up to y'all. Um okay. but yeah. Uh, the next the next major provision is uh, roof sides excluding uh, mansard roof signs are changed to be prohibited citywide. They're currently allowed in downtown. Can I uh, ask where you are? What page he's you reading are? from the packet, from page the packet. 13. Well, I didn't get that packet till today, and I didn't even open it. it I, this was sent out in a memo to you as well. I got I have this, this part, but I'm on page four. What what page? This are you is going? this one's identical what they emailed us on Friday. So this is page. <laughs> This is our packet, page 13, section 1302C is what he's about to know. Standard to. packet. Yeah. I don't know where you are. Um, it, it, I think it's one the next major change was the application process has been revised. Uh, this includes a, a, a shot clock review. We didn't previously have a, a, a shot clock included, uh, so that would make the code basically susceptible to a prior restraint challenge. Uh, and so this is in there that basically that our, our goal is to have them reviewed within a couple days, but we have a, a requirement in there that they be some, some form of action be taken on an application uh, within that, that shot clock period. Uh, information requirements for pim permits have, have been enhanced to allow better determination for compliance. So sometimes we, we receive differing information that makes it a little bit difficult for us to determine whether a sign complies or not. Uh, there's a new fee schedule with it, so or, or fee system. Essentially, it's it defers the city council to set a fee schedule, so it's not necessarily set within there, but if the, the city council doesn't set a fee schedule, uh, then it's set it uh, for a sign permit. It's set at fifty dollars, and then increasing annually by one dollar from there on. Uh, the big change is, is banner permits have been converted to sort of this general temporary sign permit. So there's temporary sign permits cover a lot of things uh, that that are existing. This is the main issue of compliance with with uh, Reed v. Gilbert, uh, and so in there, it's basically a general temporary sign permit. They're set to be valid for six months, uh, and it, currently it's 12 months. It will be changed to six months. Some of the issues that we have, these signs can stay up. They're not very durable, and so having a permitting process that has that rollover uh, is important. Um, clarifying inspection requirements on footings and electrical, for, and electrical work, uh, make sure, making sure that it's inspected by the city's building inspector for safe installation. That's a... Uh, Additional big clarification. The policies regarding uh, message uh, for temporary sign permits has been revised uh, again to be compliant with, with Reed v. Gilbert. Um, there are const new construction standards uh, in the code. Uh, so this is meant for uh, better quality signage that's durable and doesn't interfere with the, the provision of utilities. Uh, the, the major change, one of the major changes here um, with that is a pr prohibition on placing signs and easements. Uh, this is to align with, with other regulations um, and then for the protection of, of utilities. One of the concerns that, that has been raised is if there is a, let's say a, a water line that breaks and there's a, a sign footing that's placed over it, uh, there could be significant amount of erosion that occurs, scouring it underneath and that sign could topple over uh, and would be pretty pretty dangerous. Uh, sign design and landscaping standards have been added to in, improve aesthetic quality. So there's a requirement that the sign relate to the structure, uh, and then also for freestanding signs that there be some some planting requirements related with that. Uh, there's more in maintenance standards to better address abandoned or dilapidated signage. Uh, abandoned signs are, are sort of changed and, and redefined. Uh, and would be required to be removed completely. So if you, uh, 
currently, um, you're not, you don't necessarily have to remove the signage if, it's, if the, the site's been abandoned. The big change with this is that if the site is abandoned for more than 90 days, if it's a non-conforming sign, the, the whole sign structure comes down. So any new signage that would go up would be conforming. James, I need to back up to I or H. H. Reed versus Gilbert and Austin versus Reagan. What was the deal there? I mean, what was that? How is it being compliant with that? What came out of that case? Uh, mainly, it's you're talking about Reed v. v. Gilbert and its content neutrality, content specifically neutrality. as it relates to to temporary signage. So. Okay, so content neutrality. So in, when we say content neutrality, basically you have to read the content of the sign to determine whether it complies or not. So a, a, a sign ordinance wouldn't be content neutral if you had to look at it and say, well, we allow political signs. And it's like, that's a political sign. So that, that would be an example of where a sign ordinance wouldn't be content neutral. Um, so an alternative to that would be constructing a requirement that basically says uh, you're allowed a sign during a election event. We don't regulate what the content of the sign is, but certain types of signs are allowed during election events. So you get a, a temporary sign that's allowed during that period. Who's gonna decide if it's content neutral? Uh, the, you're talking about the sign? Mm -hmm. Well, Sorry. we're not we're not judging the, the content. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's, an, it's an issue of the, the sort of the regulation has been written in a manner so that you don't have to read the content of the sign to determine whether it complies or not. It's just based on the size or the standards size? Size, placement, placement. Yep. location. Okay. And Reed v. Gilbert holding, I mean, uh, this is one sentence, a municipal ordinance that placed stricter limitations on the size and placement of religious signs than other types of signs was an unconstitutional content-based restriction on free speech. So for religious signs, you can say, this is the type of sign that you can have and where you can put it. This is specifically related to temporary signage. So there, there was an, a, an issue where the, a, a church was wanting to place directional signage to where they, it was a kind of a church that moved around. And uh, they allowed special event signage, but they wouldn't allow it for the church. And so it was kind of a, it was a, kind of a discriminatory, discriminatory speech issue. Um, Standards for site triangles uh, have been enhanced. So currently it's, it's measured from property line. This would change it to where it's measured from the back of curb. And then there's also site triangle requirements for, for driveways. Um, so it's a, it's a little bit of a give and a little bit of a take on that, that situation to be more aligned with, with safety concerns. Next is in uh, section 1303. Um, so, when we talk about various forms of signage that are not permanent uh, have been grouped together. So if you're looking in the, the ordinance itself, that, that table 1303.1, temporary signs, uh, that kind of lays out all of the different types of temporary signs. So you can have a temporary sign when a building is under construction or renovation, one when it's for sale, lease, or rent, uh, temporary sign during elections, uh, temporary sign when there's a garage or yard sale on the property. Uh, you can have an A-frame sign uh, for commercial use. Uh, and then just general commercial or institutional uses can have a general temporary sign. So you can have the combination of these various uh, signs during certain periods or certain activity that's going on the property. So we're regulating based on the, the what's occurring on the property rather than what the content of the sign is. Um, the process for dealing with PUDs and specific plans has been, has been clarified. Um, basically, the way that it currently is structured, it just says the signs and PUDs will be dealt with as part of the PUD process. Well, a lot of times, we, it, it never gets into that, that level of detail with the PUD at the time that it's, it's uh, seen by y'all or passed. And so this provides them an option to review under, what the, let's say it's a commercial PUD, they could review under the C3 requirements and not have to come back for some type of amendment or something along those lines. Um, there's an increased allowance, size allowance, on freestanding signs on developments between five acres and, and 20 acres so that uh, we kind of increase the sort of the, the size that is allowed in the, those instances. So we increased it from, 
from 64 to 80 square feet when, when the development is between five and 20 acres. Um, the next one is, uh, there's a, a provision in the development review uh, section of the code that deals with regional scale developments, um, but it's not specifically reflected in the sign ordinance. So we have to, anytime we deal with something that's signage related for regional scale development, um, we have to go through the variance process. This makes it to where it no longer goes through the variance process and they're just allowed by right. Let's say Lewis Crossing or Lewis Ranch, you could have a one regional scale uh, development sign. It could be up to 400 square feet uh, 35 feet tall, and so it's, a, it's kind of a new allowance that, that did not previously exist. That is in addition to any freestanding signage that is on each individual lot within the, within the development. So let's say, for instance, um, you've got an individual lot in there, then you could do a monument sign on, on your property as well. Uh, another pretty significant change relates to, to wall signage. So currently, uh, it has to be a street frontage, um, and you're not you're not you're not allowed wall signage on on every facade wall. Uh, this would be changed to where wall signage would be allowed on on every single wall uh, up to 10%. So our current allowance is you can have one wall sign up to 10%. This says you can have as many wall signs as you want, provided you don't go over 10%, and that's inclusive of of window signage. So. That's, that's an area where there's some additional flexibility that's been provided. Um, another, another big change is a, elimination of the interstate sign zone. So that's an area that's uh, within 100 feet of the sort of the median, or 1,000 feet of the median of I-40. You're currently allowed very tall signs. Uh, that, that has been sort of taken away in this ordinance. What it's been replaced with is uh, sort of a way to slowly address making those signs uh, sh smaller over time. Um, so, you know, if you've got two signs within uh, 300 feet that are of X height, you take the average of them, and then you say you can have 75% of that, that height and 75% of that area. And so it basically what it does is slowly bring those over time. One of the things that I've seen with sign ordinances in the past, uh, this was a great example when I worked in, in Fayetteville, we had a, a requirement that is basically like, you either keep what you got or you place it with something that's 100% that's compliant. And so there's still signs that I reviewed, I reviewed a sign permit 15 years ago in Fayetteville, they, they, the business wanted to improve their signage, but when they realized they were gonna lose the setback that they have, and the, the poll and all of those things, they said, no way, we're not gonna do it. And so this is sort of a, a, a way to ease that to where you've got a pathway towards compliance. That additionally applies for any existing non-conforming signage. So if you've got an existing non-conforming sign, then we'll allow it to be reduced by 75% of the height and 75% of the area, and you can, you'd be allowed to do that by right. Currently, we have to go through a variance process to do that. So, Again, it's trying to make some of these things a little bit uh, smoother in terms of how it's applied. So I have a question there. An interstate sign, you know, so if they change it at all, it has to decrease in size. They can change, they can change sign face. So if they change the sign, sign cabinet or structure, and this is also talking about if you've got, let's say, uh, someone's putting up a new sign. So let's say it wouldn't... Um, Let's say Whataburger came to, came to town, right? And they opened up a business. For them, they would have to look at what's what are the tall signs within within 300 feet. You look at two of them and say, okay, we can have 75% of that average, essentially. Okay, but the existing signs can stay there, and they can change the wording, the poster, whatever's on it. They can they they can change message if they do a, essentially if they do a structural change then it has to come towards compliance at that point. It's a structural change. Okay. Is the delineation between a billboard and the interstate sign simply size, or is there more to that? There's, there's more to it. Uh, there's several criteria of what makes something a, a billboard. Okay. Uh, but the, one of the, the, the chief distinctions is A, size, um, and then uh, B is on-premise on versus off-premise uh, message. 
and is the is the setback from I think I read a thousand feet from the median of the interstate is that the same or is that becoming more restrictive as well that's the same the, so the interstate sign zone is currently it says a thousand feet from the, the center line uh, essentially the way that that the way that that is drawn in our GIS is the median so so it's the same as yeah okay so like the sign we just approved not too long ago for Olive Garden, did it meet these standards? No. Okay. This is off premise. So yeah. This is off premise. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't an interstate sign. Yeah. Okay. So do you think it would? It's going to cause us to have requests for changes for signs pretty often. For for variances. Yeah, for variances. Uh, no, I think I think the net the, the the net change for this is going to be that there will probably be fewer variance applications. Y'all don't currently y'all don't see uh, any sign variance applications. Uh, this would be changed to basically align with state law on variances. So that would be something that y'all would y'all would start reviewing, but y'all don't currently see those. Okay. Um. Another is uh, providing allowance for murals with commercial messages and providing an approval process for murals. Currently, we don't we don't have that, and so we get in some some sticky situations um, because those murals sometimes have commercial messages. And so, is it a sign? Is it art? It's it's a very it's a very uh, vague area currently. So are you going to work with the art district thing now to, about murals? Art this walk? is this is not related to public art. It would be related okay. to anybody that's doing a private okay. something that's not private. Right to public art. Okay. Wait, what does that mean? What you, so, where? public art would be something that's a project that's basically paid for by the city. Private art would be if someone paints it on their own building. So, any mural is not done by the city. Yeah. So, a business that wants to do their mural would fall under this. Correct. And yeah. you're basically saying that needs to come to the planning commission. In terms of the the structure of it, no. The way if it's it's going to depend. It depends on where it's located. The review procedure is different. If it's if it's within um, the old part of Conway, it would go to the historic district commission, which is largely consistent with the way that the majority of cities handle that. That they send those to their their historic district commission for. If I'm downtown and I'm painting a mural, say on Markham, where does that go? It would go to historic, historic. district commission. But what if you're not down? Town on Markham, you're just painting it on the side of your church. You have an artist at church or something like that. Just using that as it example. would go. It would go through an alternative signage plan, which which comes to the planning commission. So come to the, so it either goes to the historic district or to the planning commission. Yeah. Okay. And I, I, part of that is part of the reasoning behind that is that it murals create a very a very difficult thing. <laughs> Thing in terms of in terms of regulation, because it, it can very easily just be morphed into a loophole for however big of a wall sign that you want, uh, and so they're having some level of check with that. Some enhanced reviews is, is the reasoning why. We, I mean, do we? I mean, I, I I'll be honest, right? We're public officials. I, I've had a lot of people reach out to me about this. So, like, do we think we have a mural problem? Like, do we think we need to create something? Do we need, think we need to create regulation because we have a problem? Well, currently, the way that the regulations currently exist, if you have commercial speech on there and it, it, it's higher than 10% of the facade wall, it's a violation. What this does is provide a path for if it does have some level of commercial message to it, that there's a pathway for it to be approved. Currently, it exists as a as a violation of the code. So. Have other cities ran into issues with this, with murals in their towns? With murals, yeah. It's it's sort of, it's a, it's an emerging area of sign law that is, is conflict prone. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not clear that the way that the, the courts have decided depends on with which district you're in. I have thoughts here, but I want to hear the rest of yours first. So, um, again, this is I'm just going through the. Yep. Yep. Um, additionally, there's providing an allowance for approval of sign permits for historic signs. So basically, if a sign is older than 50 years old, an example is is Cordsmeyer. Currently, 
if we allow something to be changed with that, it, we just have to ignore the ordinance. This provides a process to allow that. Uh, next is, is non-conforming signage, uh, and it deals with the grandfathering or regulation of signs that don't, don't conform to regulations. Uh, we clarified the application of, of legally non-conforming provisions for temporary signage, and then what I, what I spoke about earlier is formalize the, the current practice of allowing non-conforming signs to be changed if reduced in, in height and size to be 75% of current height and size. Uh, administration and enforcement. Um, so this kind of lays out the violation processes, variance procedures, administration of the regulations. Uh, the variances have been aligned uh, with, with state law, so those variance applications come to you all when you're acting as the Board of Adjustment. Um, we've allowed for the, the violation process to be sped up currently. If someone, if we note a violation, we send a notice, they have 60 days, then we send another letter, and then we issue a citation. This would change it from 60 days down to 30 days. Is this from code enforcement? It's a letter from code enforcement? No, the, way that, the way that it works is there's a letter from the, from the planning department letting someone know that uh, they're currently in violation of the code. This is what you need to address. It needs to be addressed by X date, and then we follow up on it. Um, Another, another uh, significant change is liability for sign violations has been clarified uh, to include anybody that has express or implied authority over a sign, uh, including a, a property owner or sign installer. One of the issues that we've, we've had are, are signs that mysteriously appear, no permit has been pulled, uh, and so it just, it just shows up. And I, so we, we want to have the ability to go after both the property owner and the because sometimes we, you might have an issue where a property owner doesn't know that they, they need a permit. Whomever installed it does. Uh, and so we, we get compliance issues with that. So does this apply to city limits or planning, the planning zone? This applies within the city limits and the TJ zone. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you have successive violations, the penalty mounts increase um, there. So that's, a, that's an additional one. And then a lot of the definitions have been changed just to align with, with basically the intent of these code changes and then additionally with, with case law. So for instance, one of, the, one of the, the significant changes is the definition of a billboard. Uh, there's about five different criteria of which a billboard, it, it meets this or it meets this or it meets this or it meets this, that, that makes it a billboard. So it's been changed significantly there. That's the run of the spiel. So. so we have a litany of questions. Is it more pertinent for us to start asking our questions now or for us to hear from the professionals first? Let's ask the questions to James. Let's see, drafter Let's first. Ask questions first. Mm -hmm. I'll start if you want me to. Okay. Sure. I, let, I, I would like to hear from the public. I, we've kept these people here. I mean, that's I, where I am. I, 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 I would like to hear from the folks that have. But they may want to hear our questions. They can stay or they can. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, let's. I, I think. I, I, I mean, my personal opinion is that I would like. That's the normal process. I mean, I, I just feel like we need to hear. Because James can get back up here for our questions. And when, that's not the normal process, but we can hear from Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm more than happy to come back. Well, it's after. not the normal process, but they can speak for 25 either and so we've let that happen so can we please hear from the people in the public yeah. anyone want to speak in favor of this sign code change in, in favor. favor in favor in favor <laughs> <laughs> we may not have any in, in favor. favor so don't have anybody to speak in favor of this so let's hear from those who oppose the sign code changes Thank you. Well, speak your, state your name and address, please. Uh, my name is Andrea Holt, um, 60 Pruitt Road, Conway, Arkansas. I work for Little Rock Conway Sign Company here in Conway, Arkansas. And I'm Bob Whitehouse from Conway, and I'm the owner of Little Rock Conway Sign here in Conway. So um, we've got some bullet points here. You've heard a lot that's gone through here. Um, let me just uh, pick on a few because we could almost pick on every line item. 
but at the same time, we're not squashing the whole thing. This is a, this is a, a full right. Um, James's team put a lot of work into the draft, so we respect that. There's some, some, some language in here that we think is good, but there's some stuff that's, uh, that's not so good. Anyways. So you have 10 minutes. Got, yes, yep. okay. So I'm going to go real fast. Okay. <laughs> okay, because uh, I want Andrea to make a few points to this. When we got this document, the first thing I, I read through it, and I said, why? And to maybe to Miss West Point, where's the demonstrated need? Now, if everybody in the city is having a major sign issue not complying, then that's probably something I don't know. Now, if that was the case, James, maybe that was the reason why you did the, 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 uh, the full draft and comprehensive full right the way you, the, the language you put in there. So that was my first question, why? Next question is, how come we weren't in the sign guys? Somebody referred to us as the experts, why wouldn't you engage us? The tree committee had Hal Crafton and they had Jimmy Rankin, two developers. Okay, we're we're in the in here in Conway. We pay our taxes here in Conway, we support Conway. How come we weren't engaged? Let me give you a couple of examples. On page five, it talks about the application of material listing. We would be required to tell, to include in our application a listing of all the materials, <coughs> listing all the materials used for the sign along with the details of the design drawings, calculations on how the sign is going to be illuminated. Now we can provide that, I promise you. If you weren't in the sign business, that'd be just gobbledygook. You wouldn't have a clue what that is. Why, I mean, why would you ask me to do that? Okay, now, Laura would. Laura would understand every bit of it because she was in the sign business a long time ago. She would get it. I'm going to guess the average person wouldn't. So I look at that and I say, that, that probably wasn't well thought out. When I look at page 20, it talks about the administrative officer. Paragraph two says, the administrative officer, which is James, is allowed to come into our building and inspect the construction of the sign, the electrical connection of the sign. Now, James, I don't know what your background is. Are you an electrician? No. Okay. No, you're, that, you're... That, would be the, that would be the building permit, folks. No, it says you. It says, the document says you. Talks about you. So not unless you're an, a, you know, a structural engineer, all of our connections are made by journeyman electricians who are licensed in the state of Arkansas. So I kind of trust you, them. If you look, uh, definition of administrative official, the person or persons designated in writing to administer and enforce this article by the mayor of the city of Conway, where no such designation exists, the planning and development director and his or her assigned shall be responsible for the, for administration of this article, the code enforcement director and his, her assigned shall be responsible for Take a look at page 20. 1305-1. Yeah. The administrative office, office, official, I'm sorry, of the article shall be the director of planning and development. Next paragraph. The administrative official is empowered upon presentation of proper documents to enter the building and goes on with doing the inspection. That refers to you. That's the language in there. Now, I'm not going to say you're going to do something bad, but if that language is in there, the next person could do something bad. You have five minutes. I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Holtz. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. When I look at, um, on page three, section 1301.2, um, section C, one through 13, there's a lot of language about uh, landscape quality and preservation. And, and I understand and I support uh, the beautification of our city, but a lot of this, these points seem very open to individual interpretation. Who decides if a sign is compatible or harmonious? 
or inharmonious for that ma matter. Um, you know, often we have customers who come in, they have established logos. We may or may not like them. Is that going to be inharmonious or incompatible? Again, that's, that's really subject to individual interpretation. So I think some of that language is very broad um, and it concerns me um, that it opens the door for rejection of a sign simply because you know somebody doesn't really like the way it looks. So I, I just find that needs to be looked at because it seems broad and vague. Um, so, and then on page 10, again, 1302.6, uh, item D, landscaping. Um, the proposal is that presenting signs shall now include a landscaping bed that extends at least at least two feet around the base of the sign in all directions. Well, along busy thoroughfares, Hark Rider, Print Street, for example, you often have a monument sign that is right on the edge of the sidewalk, uh, the property line, the right of way. How are you going to enforce having a two foot perimeter around a sign? Are they going to have to back that sign up into their park proposed parking lot? It seems like that there's got to be um, that needs to be looked at a little little more carefully. Um, to me, it hampers the business owner's ability to use their property effectively. Um, and if it's four foot off the road, customers driving by have difficulty seeing that. You're, you're, you're a reverend and you need to be driving. You can't see that sign. I think that places an undue burden on the business owner. Um, we're already, uh, it, it's our understanding that we as the sign permit holder, which is often us, we, do the, we usually apply for the customer, that we'd be responsible for the landscaping. Again, we're, we're, we're sign professionals. We're not, we're not landscapers. I, I, I don't feel that in any way, um, when we're already facing extra steps um, in the permit process, that we should be held liable and responsible for a landscaping plan. And I just feel like, um, the landscaping, that's just something that needs to be looked at a little bit more carefully because there are many instances where um, I believe that that would be an undue burden and would be almost impossible for a business owner to comply with. So, um, again, just as Mr. Whitehouse said, some, some good things in here. I know it was a lot of work, but um, we would like to see sign companies have some input. We, we have a unique perspective and knowledge about the sign business and, and an ordinance of this scope and, and scale. We feel like we should have, be allowed some input. Thank you. Got it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The next person to speak in opposition of this will have two minutes. Three, three minutes. Hi, your name and address? Uh, my name is uh, Greg Kreiner, and uh, I um, work with a company called Lamar Outdoor Advertising in Little Rock. Uh, and I'm going to, uh, I have just a brief thing. I'll probably just kind of read this. Uh, and I'm just going to speak a little bit more towards the off-premise or billboard section of this more than anything else. But I do sincerely appreciate your time this evening to visit with us. Um, I have been with Lamar for 22 years, uh, managing leases, real estate, permitting, not only with the highway department, but with all the cities across the state of Arkansas in that capacity. Um, late last week, we became aware of this meeting and the language uh, which is in the draft concerning off-premise or billboard signs. Uh, to back up in time a slight bit, we contacted the planning department approximately 60 days or so and spoke with a Lauren Hoffman to ask some questions about a location we have along Interstate 30, an existing billboard sign that we have, a location where there was a sound barrier wall that was constructed by the Arkansas Highway Department. 
and the construction of this wall completely covered, blocked the view of our sign, removed our ability to market the sign and the space on the sign as well. We knew that the first step was to see what the process with the city of Conway would be to perhaps inquire about either raising or rebuilding the sign to restore the existing visibility that we had. Um, since the overall height of the sign is limited to 30 feet by the ordinance, uh, we knew that we needed to start here and ask what needed to be done. Uh, we consider this a true hardship by definition um, and we knew the permitting process would begin with the city. Uh, upon two to perhaps three phone calls later, uh, we were finally informed that the planning director does have the ability to make an administrative exception uh, and could perhaps grant us some relief to this hardship uh, or if he would decide not to, uh, then a variance process would have to be pursued with that. Um, it was also communicated to us at that point for the first time uh, that there was a discussion of changes and perhaps an amended sign ordinance that was being considered. Uh, at this point, on June the 22nd, I placed an email to the planning director, asked for a phone call and a meeting to sit down and discuss this issue with the sound barrier wall, um, as well as input uh, around changing the sign ordinance. Uh, received an email back uh, that he was out of the office until the 28th of June, uh, and we still have not received any response to our inquiry to date. Uh, the sentiment that I would like to express is that our company, Lamar Outdoor Advertising, is an owner and operator of several of these signs within the city. Uh, not only were our requests to communicate and meet not acted upon, no notice of this draft was given to us, an industry that would be directly affected by this ban of an off-premise billboard placement. This is not a minor change. This is a major change in the operation of that. Uh, we understand some time ago that the desire of the city was not to have new placements of billboard signs on the interior routes of the city. And we have been working uh, within the area that is limited to the interstate. Uh, we have also been working with the capped number of locations that we have had since I believe 2006 or so uh, and have not had any difficulty working with that. So this draft, uh, it goes without any input or suggestions from our industry. Uh, it arrives with little to no advance notice to prepare and it seems that these are issues for public and companies which operate in the public to have a dialogue with public officials, uh, which would be a reasonable idea to ask for. So uh, tonight, what we really are here for is just to communicate our desire to work with you, uh, to see what you want to do with the signs and how we can assist you and help with that uh, and, and, and not injure our industry, help the city have a better aesthetic look and a better functionality, uh, but at the same time, you know, maintain some integrity for our industry as well. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I do. I do have a question for you. Is it okay to ask for Jim? Mm -hmm. Justin. Um, so, um, you you mentioned that you you all would like to have input and be a part of the process. Do you, have you had a chance? I'm kind of putting you on the spot. What would that look like? Um, from your perspective, like an ideal situation, what would the process look like to engage you all? The person that is behind me, uh, he's with Lamar as well, and he's probably best suited to lay that exact scenario out for you right here. <laughs> yeah, if you could just, I, I mean, I, I would just like to hear from you all, like how would you like to be engaged? I think that would be great. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Your name and address. Hopefully, hopefully you all can hear me. <clears throat> yes. Tonight's my birthday, so I'm missing cake and ice cream. Sorry, so, uh, I'm going to try and be pretty quick. But I do appreciate y'all listening tonight. My name's Tom Gibbons. I work for Lamar Outdoor Advertising. I'm the vice president, general manager for in, in the metro area and throughout the state of Arkansas. Been with Lamar for going on 33 and a half years. Worked in four states, uh, but I've been in, been in Little Rock for 20 years. 
So I've dealt with a lot of ordinances, a lot of cities uh, on changes. That's the first thing I'd like to say. Um, most importantly to us is trying to serve the community in which we operate, which are our advertisers, and obviously being good partners with any city that we operate with. I'd like to read off just a few, and if you would, I'm going to hand these, and you all can pass them around, take a look. Uh, I'll be able to answer a few questions. But anyway, here's, here's just a few of the advertisers who use our product. Uh, University of Central Arkansas, Red River Valley, uh, River Valley Tractor, uh, uh, Caldwell Toyota, Car Tie, Baptist Hospital, of course, uh, Robert Ott Insurance, Chicken Salad Chick, I'm just mentioning ran at random, Sissy's Log Cabin, which is, is new to the area, uh, which has a new store in Conway. So those are just some of the few. I listed about 40, but I think we work on, on I think we have about, uh, about 180 customers that we work with uh, in Conway. And, and as Greg said, uh, you know, this is not a minor change. This is an outright ban on billboards. But what I'd like to speak to uh, is go back on the history of Conway's ordinance. There actually has been a ban on billboards in Conway since I've been in Little Rock over 20 years. You could not build one billboard inside the city limits of Conway except one place, and that was on the interstate. The whole town has been shut down for over 20 years. Uh, in 2006, it was agreed upon uh, the city and the industry it would it would be agreeable to just allow the number of signs that we had on the interstate and cap that number. So the cap of 33 is speaks to just the 33 billboards on the interstate. Not there's very few billboards actually on the interior of Conway. I think there's one on Oak Street between the interstate and downtown. Um, so in the 33, the allowable area is from Dave Ward to the old Moralton Highway. So at this time, I'd like to pass this around um, and let, let you all take a look. Just somebody said, what would it look like? And I just did a, a, a before and basically a before and after. So can you answer that question for us of what yeah, it would look like for you to how you would like us? Your time is up, but if you could answer that question for us, that would be great. What would it look like for you to work with us? I actually in 2020 reached out to the planning department and actually voluntarily uh, proposed an exchange basically for us to to have a way to reduce the number of signs and have a better look. But at that time, the discussion was not open. And, and, and that's what I think what I'm most disappointed about uh, that I speak to tonight is that <clears throat> we just would have liked to have the opportunity if there was a task force for somebody to reach out to us because before and after is what that can, can actually look like. And you have a great partner with a company who's a national company who does this. And we, I could give you examples of community after community where we have taken signs down and done architecturally designed signs. But if you do a total ban, there's never gonna be that opportunity of what that could look like. If you do a ban, the billboards that are there now that are steel, built on old I-beams or built on monopoles, they're just gonna stay in those places and they're, they're never gonna change. So if you do a total ban, you're taking that opportunity away to make to actually make your city look better down the road. Um, Greg's pretty accurate on this. Uh, what's, the, what's the need for a ban? We haven't built one billboard in this city. There's not been a billboard built in over 10 years. I think one has been built on the interstate. And the last thing that Greg spoke to, uh, one of the things he spoke to was we had two billboards, and I think the gentleman behind us, who I think they're gonna speak, had one the highway department put up a sound barrier wall and uh, we began recently trying to look at a way to recover our sign locations that had been totally blocked. And, um, you know, so if a ban were put in place, 
we would lose that opportunity to be able to continue to have two two locations that we uh, going not saying that correctly but anyway we would lose we would lose the availability that we have two billboard opportunities that are blocked to be able to put them in another area or another location that that we could market to you know market to customers yeah can I I'm 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 just not tracking with you about how you all want to be involved. Like, what specifically? I mean, I think this opportunity for public feedback is. I hear you say you want to be involved. I think everybody. Well, I mean, there's a good contingent of people that want you to be involved. So help us understand how we can support that. How do you? So in an ideal situation, how, well, how would you say you could be involved? The ideal situation would be for us to be able to sit down with the planning department, with the parties involved, the city and show different examples of what kind of billboard exchanges we could do, what kind of reduction plan we could do to, to make things look better over time. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. There you Perfect. go. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in opposition? State your name and address, please. <laughs> uh, I'm Jasper Burton. I'm with Curedon Sign Company. I'm probably the evil one of this uh, 2006 sign ordinance because uh, I was involved. I was on the planning commission. Bless y'all's hearts. You know, five years is a long time. <laughs> thank, thank you because I know nobody's doing it for the money. <laughs> but uh, I was I was actively involved in the and creation of the sign ordinance. And, and I'm, I'm frustrated because I've, I've offered several times to, to help with the sign ordinance, but but the, the powers that be felt like I would be the chicken, uh, the, the, the fox in the hen house, uh, not to let me be. I don't, I don't like billboards on every corner. I don't like digital signs seven down the street. But, but I do like Conway. My grandfather started Curedon Sign Company four houses down from where I'm living right now. I live in the same neighborhood, and, and I've been a supporter of this community for a long time. Um, James, to say that there was, you know, you kind of glossed over a little on the, the change of the interstate sign zone, because doesn't that make all of those tall signs that are lawfully erected and legally put up there as as recently as six months ago. Now they're going to be illegal? It, they would have legal non-conforming status. Yeah, they'd be, they'd be illegal. I mean, you can't change them. I mean, if you have to change them, you have to change them by 75%. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, so you've got businesses that have invested money and, and done the right thing when they came here under the law. And and y'all are going to make changes, and it's not going to be a legal sign anymore. If the sign blows down, what what rights do they have to put it back up? None. Not a, right? They So if it blew down, if it's within that zone, then they could, you know, basically take two signs within within 300 feet, figure out what the average height is, and then do something that's, I think, 75%. That, so they'll never get that back. No. no. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so that's pretty important. And and I wouldn't want to say, well, we just changed the, the zone on that. All, all of the businesses within 1,000 feet, of, and, and that's both sides. I have a few billboards. I have three in the city limits of Conway plus one that's behind the, the barrier. At mine, my sign was uh, uh, located on a, a storage property, a used store place. They didn't have any kind of, you know, problems with the noise in the storage facility. But nonetheless, half of my sign got blocked, and I asked James about relocating my sign to another spot. And he said, where? I didn't know where, because because at the same time we did the sign ordinance, we expanded the the spacing requirements from 500 feet that the highway department requires to 1,000, so 1,000 feet now, I believe. So we effectively cut down the 
the, the available spots by 50%. I mean, we're, 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 we're severely regulated and, 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 and it's, I, I could go on, I don't, I want, I just want to ask if y'all would please continue this or, or set uh, another public hearing. I can read and, and send y'all some information as to the, the key points. I'm disappointed that we didn't have any businessmen on on this task force that set this up. No, no, you know, and, and those are the people that it affects. My billboards serve thousands of employees that work here, a hospital, uh, all the motel and industry. You know, those people rely on that. Not everybody's got a GPS to tell them how to get to where they got to go. Um, I, I, would, I would respectfully request that y'all extend this out. Let us have an opportunity to provide you some written input and consideration. I, I'm not saying that you don't, changes don't need to be made. I'm just saying we'd like to have some input on it. And I think it, it, would, it would really be nice if we had somebody from the Chamber of Commerce on that task force. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in opposition to this code change? Okay. We have questions for James. More questions for James? <clears throat> I've got questions, but so I'll, I guess I'll just start with my thoughts. I'm going to operate under the assumption that this is going to be tabled. I know currently it's not something I can support as is. Um, so I'll ask my questions. Don't necessarily have to be answered right now. Just something that can be addressed in our next staff report, the next meeting, between meetings, whatever. Um, and I'll be happy to make a motion to table it once our discussion's over. Sure. Uh, so the first I'll be glad to second said motion. <laughs> Third. So my first question is around the the enforcement and how these will be consistently applied. I don't necessarily think that's our purview, but to the extent that approving the language is our purview, I think how it's gonna be consistent application. We talked about commercial versus residential, all that stuff. So I think that matters. I'd like to learn more about that. Um, to the why question, you mentioned the Reed versus Town of Gilbert. I would like to know which of all these changes are to become compliant with that and which ones are more just <laughs> continuous improvement type changes? Essentially the, the changes that are related to, to the Gilbert case relate to temporary signage. Okay, okay. So the rest are just improvements as the, the city seat, yeah, okay. Uh, and then lastly, well really two more. Um, I'd like to know more about the public notification. I know through some previous correspondence that um, we're within the requirements that were met or, or a public notification of things like this, but I would just like to know more about that. Um, were landowners on the interstate included? Things like that. No. And then lastly, I guess why not if no? Um, and then lastly, uh, and this would probably go into a potential motion, but can we do more to work with the concern and the, the public that, that we heard tonight? But again, don't don't need answers to all that now. That's just where I'm at. And can that be included in the motion if we do table it, that they are included in the ways that they express that they would like to be involved with the process? That, that yeah. task force is created That's with the, the public? With the public yeah. or Not with just experts the city. or professionals in the signage yeah. industry. Do we have That's that? the motion that I'm, that I'm most interested in. Because I know we all have our own questions, and I mean, I, I'm with Rebecca in that I've gotten more texts, phone calls, messages about this than anything else that has happened in the limited time that I've been on the commission. But I'm most interested in looking at these questions, but with the advice of the expert. So okay. let us just go in order. Mr. West, did you have questions? Well, I mean, if we're just addressing things that, like the term, some of the verbiage, I would agree with the people here. Uh, Sorry. And uh, I do agree with the lady that spoke on the landscaping, the two foot landscaping, the four foot, uh, uh, four foot off road signs. 
and there was a few things that that were ambiguous as far as the uh, really subjective language. I apologize. It was uh, landscaping standards, and that's all it said. Well, that doesn't tell me a whole lot. So basically, just things like that, James. Um, to clarify, you're, you're looking for us to ask whatever questions we have right now yes. before we make it. Okay. So uh, I'll restate that I think there needs to be additional clarity around 1302B for string lights because that's that's vague. Again, specify between commercial and residential, uh, Christmas lights, et cetera, et cetera. Also, just for the record, I am opposed to vape shop string lights, but I think we need to be clearer. Um, 1302K, enhanced maintenance standards have been added to better address updated signage, abandoned signs have been redefined and be required to be removed completely. Is that an instance where, you know, business goes out of business, leaves, sign is non-conforming, decides it has to be removed? Is that an, an instance where, similar to, like, code enforcement, it, the city would remove it and charge? Matt, or, can, you, can you restate that just a, a little just bit? A tad, just to take it? Yeah, that's the first time in my life I've been asked to slow down. Um, <laughs> 1302K. Enhanced maintenance standards have been added to better address abandoned or dilapidated signage. Abandoned signs have been redefined and will be required to be removed completely. So in the event that Arby's goes out of business and their sign is non-conforming and they're gone and it's been abandoned for I believe nine months was the period you said and the sign has to be removed days at that point. Because if they're gone and out of business, the city can remove it. I guess the city's desire, but then are we paying for it? Are we trying to build them? How does that work? Yeah, and, and I appreciate being able to, to answer these questions while we got folks here, because I, I think it whatever discussion that we have going forward, I think will be enriched by, the, by our time here that we're spending. Sure. Um, so there's kind of a, a two track for abandoned signs. The, the removal of abandoned signs, so something would be considered abandoned when the site is no longer occupied and it's, the site has become vacant for more than 90 days. So essentially three months. If it is a, a legally conforming permitted sign, then essentially what that means, the removal of the sign means removal of the message. So it doesn't mean altering the, the sign structure. It just means it need, if you've got a sign cabinet, Change out the sign cabinet to where it's blank at that point, so that we don't we don't have Popeyes, you know, being advertised for several years after Popeyes is no longer there. If it is for a sign that is legally non-conforming or otherwise non-conforming, essentially what that means is removal of the the sign message, the sign cabinet, and then additionally the sign pole. So we have a lot of a lot of existing structures. Uh, for instance, along Hark Rider or Oak Street where a business has gone out and you've got a, a pole left. And so now we just have sort of these obelisks that, you know, that are, are standing monument to what, what used to be there. And so that's, with this, it would be clarified that if it, from the, from the day that the site becomes non-occupied, they've got 90 days and then it's to reoccupy it and then it's, the, they have to remove the signage. And that would be the landowner responsible for removing it. Correct, yeah. But there's more than one instance that we can see where restaurant A goes out of business, they're gone, you can't charge them for removal. I mean, correct? It would be whomever the, the landowner is. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not the tenant. All right. Not the tenant, got it. All right. Um, 1303. Murals, um, this one has been, I mean, this, this was one that if I had known that this was being worked on, I would have wanted to talk about and discuss um, prior to this, because I, I, I know that this has been a pain point for numerous business owners locally. Um, I don't know that I have an explicit question here right now, other than I think I would point back to the why of like, has this really been that big of an issue? My perception is that it feels like it's been more difficult for businesses than I would like for it to be. I don't, I don't know that I really have an explicit question there. So, I'll so I think, I think to, to clarify on that, the way that the, the ordinance is currently written, 
if you have a commercial message on there, so if it's something that is either explicitly a logo or it's something that directs attention to the location based upon the message being related to what the what's going on in the premises, that's considered a sign. Got it. Currently, currently the way that the sign code is written. So there, there are instances where we have had to tell someone either, no, you can't have that mural because what the, the content of what you're, you're putting on there makes it a sign and it's too large to be a sign. Or we've had people that have just gone and, and put them up uh, and it constitutes a violation. And so it's, the, the current path is extremely messy. Um, because it, essentially there is no formalized process for dealing with them other than going through the violation process and saying, telling X person you can't do that and then go into the next one and they, it just goes up and then we have to go through the violation process to deal with it. So, I'm, so, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Alexander. If I have a flower shop and I'll put a flower on the side of my building, is that considered a sign or a mural? It, the, if... I would say in that, that instance, more than likely, yes. Yes to what? Yes it's a sign. sign. So if I have yeah. a flower shop, paint a sign, flower so on the side of my building. For, so for a direct statement, because I, I mean, I could point to a number of like questions from business owners in the past, but direct, like recent example, the beautiful new murals on the back of neighborhood pet shop. They're gorgeous. They look great. They're pets. So are they non-conforming? Were those permitted? Are they? They, they were not permitted and they, they yeah, are science. technically a violation. Correct. So even though, I mean, I, I, arguably they are certainly enhancing the look of that building and, you know, downtown, they would still technically be a violation. So hence, hence why there's a process to deal with. Yeah, that. yeah. But the process then would have been to request a variance, I assume, or would they just have not been able to do that? So if they wanted to follow the correct way to do that under Currently, this Currently, no. Standing, under the current ordinance, there's no, because you can't request a variance for area. Okay, so under the new ordinance, would there what, would there be a, a way for a path for them to do that? Uh, for portions of them, yes. Yeah. For say again. For portions of it, if it's on a non-primary facade wall, they could. Yes. Which there's is correct because it's on the back of the building. Is that a non-primary facade? Their primary facade I would, would be have facing. To, I'd have to. We'd have to look at it. So their primary facade is facing front street, front door. It's entrance. where their front door is. Yeah. So the, and they they painted it on the opposite side. Okay. Okay, um, I don't know that I have more questions, thoughts, so I, I think that's it for me. And I've been addressed by Adam and Andrew. Okay. Yeah, I, I have a lot of questions, but I'm not going to ask them because I don't feel like this is the draft that's going to ultimately be approved. Sounds like we're going to table this. I, I think I, I have more, um, there, it is so much easier and you get such a better product when you have something to start with and you can edit rather than create right it's easier to edit than it is to create so i appreciate that this is a first document i think that there seems to be a lot of concern from the community um, and from key stakeholders that they've not had the opportunity to give input and that concerns me um, and i think we we need to do better um, and we need to create space for for lots of conversation to happen whether or not that input we're not always going to agree, but we have to have space for those conversations. And so I, I, yeah. I want to ensure that this, since this has now come to the Planning Commission without that, I would like for us to have a conversation as a Planning Commission about what all we would like to happen before this comes back. So that's yeah. that's what I would like to happen. I would, I would agree with that. So. Okay. Um, and then I'll ask my questions when that happens. Okay, I have some <laughs> questions uh, prior to that. I had a question about the signs that are prohibited, and it's talking about signs affixed to or painted on a vehicle or trailer. Is this talking about food trucks? No, that's that's relating to basically when someone pulls in. Let's say we've had instances where a business has put a large sign on the back of a trailer um, and parked it there out by the street permanently and essentially trying to use use the fact that it's on a trailer and it's mobile as a as a loophole to the to the sign requirements and so that's meant to address that so the food trucks have signs painted on them would you make a distinction between a mobile 
I don't know how you can make a distinction. But, uh, mobile food vendors <laughs> have, the, we have a separate section that relates to mobile food vendors. And, and signs as well. It's, it's a it's whole section that regulates them. mobile food vendors, yeah. Okay. James, is your example like they have a permanent storefront food place, but then they have maybe a catering service and then they paint that truck or trailer? Is no, that literally it's, it's, let's say someone has a installation business for some type of home improvement. Okay. They have a trailer, they park it out in front and it stays there forever. Okay. And it's got a, it's got a, just a, a, a sign on a, Sitting out there, that's four by eight or something. That's on, on sitting on the trailer. Okay. It is this. This tightens up. Tightens that up. Okay. Okay. And then, um, what is the site triangle? Is that like where you see? Like, what is? Okay. Uh, essentially, a site triangle. So when you pull up to an intersection, it's the area when you look, you know, to your left or to your right, uh, making sure that there's not some sort of a obstruction okay. in that area that prevents you from being able to see pedestrians or or other vehicles. Okay. And my last thing is not a question, but it's a comment. I think uh, some Mr. Querton may have, or I'm sorry, Burton may have said it about uh, asking, uh, also talking with the chamber because the businesses use signs to market their business. And if you have some signs that are going to have to be diminished in size, that could also diminish their competition, their level of competition within like, the other sign stays up there, but then my sign gets smaller. Who sign is it going to see the most? When it, it when a change is made to my sign, and I have to get an average of two signs, and and then I get seventy five percent of that, then my <coughs> business advantage is taken away. So I think the chamber could help with that. I guess business people in general. That's all I have. All right. Ethan. So we talked about task force. One, do we have any authority to create said task force that we've talked about? Uh, y'all can y'all can certainly create a a subcommittee of the the planning commission. Uh, additionally, the ordinance could be extracted out of the planning commission and and taken up by the council. That's a that's another option that exists. Um, my recommendation would be that. Um, because there's so much concern among all the planning commission that if you're going to have public meetings that you all be present uh, and all be involved, um, that, that I think that's that's important, Fair. that it not be delegated. But, but if you few. have that subcommittee, can we bring people from the outside? Do you have the authority? To it would have to. It would have to be a public meeting. Yeah. Right. But, but it yeah. can be open forum. Correct. Yes. Time, not yes. limited. Clarifying, Ethan, are you asking about forming a specific committee or just saying the Planning Commission will host a public meeting for the community to Well, we've talked about that? a task force, so I just didn't know if we had the authority to create that, because obviously yeah. the mayor like, has Like the tree task one. force, right? What? Like the tree task force, right. right? There was already a task force created, so do we have the... Would it be easier so to utilize the task force that already exists and add, ask way. for certain stakeholders to go back and, and fine-tune tooth comb this? Well, but I, the, I think the biggest concern here has been that there wasn't public input, and the existing task force is made up of city employees okay. entirely. Correct? Correct. Well, I would say use the existing tax, task force and add to that task force. Yeah, I'm talking about adding. Okay, yeah. The, that would work. Adding that. some business, yeah. maybe adding someone from the chamber just so That would work. But if you uh, create a task force, would have to issue a change to the. Yeah, it, I, I think it's it's one thing to, to say we're. We're doing something as a as a planning commission. It's an entirely other thing to then start directing staff, which I think would be that would be probably tenuous if you're if you're wanting to latch on or change the the, the administrative task force or the task force that was set up otherwise. I would there would need to be some other discussions held with other folks about that. But certainly, if uh, the planning commission said they wanted to set a special meeting in which, you know, there was more discussion of this, that's, that'd be perfectly fine. So what would happen if tonight we said, there's so much concern about this, we're not taking this up? What do you do? Like, what's, what's the plan after that? Well, if it's not going to pass and go to council. We would have to motion to table if we wanted it to come back to us, would we not? Otherwise, because you, you said we could just all out and say, we don't want it, and send it to council. But I think what we're really hearing here is we do want it, yeah. right? Right. Absolutely. It changes. So then the correct thing would be for us to 
table and make a recommendation based on we want to hold, we as a commission want to hold a public meeting for further discussion. We want to evaluate involving community stakeholders. So then we would also have a rewrite if, uh, if needed, and then we come back and vote on that. I could be convinced differently, but I would argue against the most efficient way to wordsmith this multi-page document is in our commission meetings. I wholeheartedly month, agree. agree. Yeah. So Absolutely. I think, to Laura's point, that there there has to be some other avenue for a subcommittee or a task force wordsmithing, and then come back to us. I wholeheartedly agree. It feels like it feels like we may need to hold uh, an invitational meeting for public input, get folks to come, provide feedback, ask the task force as it stands now to attend that, or a representative from the task force. And then maybe expand on on that task force. If this if the administrative people don't want to be involved, that's fine. We can create another one. Um, but there's got to be a group to do the work. You know what I mean? To actually do the rewrite. And I don't think you want the planning commission to do that. I, I think that's not a good use of anybody's time. Or frankly, okay. we're not the expertise. So I don't know how you guys feel about that. But it seems like we need to kind of facilitate a more inclusive process. Exactly. Yeah. Agree. I'll, I'll leave you all to define that. So. I, I, I would be willing to put in the motion that staff investigate ways to handle this. Because I, I don't think these public meetings once a month are the way to wordsmith this. I agree. No. I just wanted to add, um, and I didn't see this if I overlooked it, if, if we're going to add uh, members of the public to the task force now, can we add the topic of uh, safety somewhere? And maybe it's in another ordinance, but I was thinking about a sign, particularly on Oak Street, where you literally have to kind of ease out to see around the sign. I know we don't regulate traffic, but then when we started talking about um, the flower bed and maybe the, um, was it two foot uh, landscaping that, so if that particular sign had to be redone or something happened to it, then you had to add the landscaping. I'm just using that as an example, but even if there's no landscaping, it wasn't safe. So I'm just wondering if safety of even, and this isn't a tall sign, this is fairly short, but you can't know, see I around it. It's the only so, one there that, I don't know how that sign got Is that there. a topic that can kind of be added into? I mean, the site triangle, that's kind of the, that's, okay. that, that I think addresses that. Okay. The, the, the issue is that, you know, either, either that sign may have been installed uh, at a time where the site triangle provisions didn't, didn't exist or whomever permitted it didn't review that. Okay. So. Okay. But otherwise, I would ditto pretty much what each of you know, the <coughs> other commissioners have said. So those are my comments. Ethan, did you have anything? That was it. That's all I had. Okay. Yeah, I think I think the big thing is there there weren't experts and other community members a part of this, and so. Just from my standpoint, it's not just one or two things. Like there's fundamental issues that's creating undue burden on business owners, sign companies. I feel like possibly creating undue burden on us if we're going to possibly get all of these variances and requests and things coming to us that we don't normally see. Um, and then also put us in a position to, to decide what is art and what isn't. We all have different opinions on what is aesthetically pleasing. I don't care for the bright green lights in the vape shops either, but also it's their building. It's in their windows. I don't get to choose. I don't want somebody to come in and tell me when I can put my Christmas lights up because I do it in October, you know? So like that, that kind of stuff. And then you're going from commercial to possibly residential the way this is written. Like that's a whole can of worms that yeah. we don't need to be telling people that. And so I would like to see like she said, input <coughs> to go through all these pieces and then this come back to us with all of the input so that we can make a better decision knowing that everybody's had their say in it. And James, we know you put a lot of work into this <laughs> and that's not, you know, not unappreciated. But it needs, it needs input from the sign people from the business community. And to, some of it is vague and very broad. Um, so I feel like we just can't make a decision so as it, is. I've got, I've got a clarification question because I, I, I don't want to overstep what the Planning Commission can do. Mm -hmm. But 
I'm in, I'm in favor of tabling this and sending it back to the task force or some subcommittee or asking staff to look into a better way to do this than a, a public hearing of the planning commission. That is not something that we can request. And if I'm maybe hearing you say that that is for city council to determine, then I'm again, not gonna make the motion. I would be in favor of a motion to not approve this. Just so that, that's where I'm at. I either want to table and find a better way or I want to not approve it, which would, I guess, send it to the city council. Or it, it wouldn't necessarily. You tell me which way to proceed. It wouldn't necessarily send it to city council unless city council decided to, to take it up. What happens if we do? If they do take it deny up, deny it, so and they, they don't take it up. What happens? But what if they take it up and say we're fine with the way it was written? I mean, I'm not saying that they would do so, that after yeah, hearing what we. Have I, to I don't say. know that they necessarily would do that, uh, but it, that's that's just if. if it's more a question of do you want to be involved in the in the, further involved in the drafting of it or not? I, I think it's appropriate for those commissioners who want to be involved to be involved. I just don't think we've already seen we're going to have a full agenda next month. I don't think here's the place. So you you, and, uh, you tell me the best way to proceed with a motion based off that. And I'll if, make it. if you're wanting if you're wanting public input, then I would schedule a special meeting and and you know. Provide additional input. Have a working have a working meeting of that type, not necessarily from a, from a standpoint of um, wordsmithing because no committee should wordsmith. Right. Right. But if you're going to raise concerns, address concerns, that would it would be appropriate for an entire committee to to be there at a special meeting. Okay. So, one, I'm sorry. One, one last question: If this is a public item, public hearing item. When other people have public hearing items, they have to post a sign so many days before the public hearing. In this case, how does the public know about it? So state statute requires that, that uh, it be placed in the in the paper. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it goes through the, what the, the established procedures in state law. So, well, I'm sorry. Wait, wait. No, well, that's, that's he, here's, the, uh, here's the deal. <laughs> We can do better. That's it. We can do better. So let me ask you this. Could we make, would this be appropriate? One table, two, federal public meeting, three, is it, I, I heard your concern there. I don't want to step past that or overstep that. Of Is it appropriate for us to say, let us host a public meeting as a commission, and then if there needs to be additional work done by commissioners, that whoever wants to join that, to work on that with your group could then do that and then that version can come back to the full commission for approval. Is that appropriate? I, you could reject us. <laughs> I, I think probably the, the easiest way to do it is to have that public meeting. I think as a result of that, we would probably have an idea of what the major concerns are. Uh, that then could be taken back administratively, work on the code changes uh, because ultimately, at the end of the day, one person writes the code changes. It's not a. It's never sure. a committee. Uh, and then and then bring it back forward. But it, essentially, from a, I think from a public meeting, if if say a, a JAP or someone you know wanted to uh, provide comments, I mean certainly I'm I'm more than happy to in, engage JAP or Bob personally yeah. now that we're now that we're at this point. Yeah. Uh, so I don't I don't have any hesitation of, of actually speaking to them. Well, and I think that satisfies our concerns of public input, because here's the thing. If we go through that process and what per, what's proposed isn't amenable, we're going to end up in the same place again, and we'll just leave. Yeah. So, so, so. I think there also needs to be the opportunity for written comment. Like, yeah. And for business so, input. Yeah, so. The chamber. So could we make a motion to, could we make a motion to table it and then to schedule that public meeting? Would that be the appropriate motion? I, I would rather see, a mo in this, my opinion, I would rather see a motion to table it and to investigate the most efficient way to handle this. I agree. I, I don't know why it still couldn't go back to the task force with more involvement from the public. and. Well, because that's the avenue for, for uh, input from the public, correct? It's public meeting? Is there a, I mean, a difference? There's, there's going to be involvement from, from stakeholders at this point forward. My main concern is that it comes back to you all and y'all haven't seen it. That's that's where my concern rests. Is that 
I'm, I'm concerned about it getting read and y'all tracking with the process because if it goes back to the task force, y'all are not involved in that. Are you right. talking so, about me? Well, we could this, get it in this is the same thing. So the, to, to me, this is this is uh, this is where we get involved. We're, we're sent the materials. We consume them before the meeting as early as we get them. And then we come and we ask questions. I don't think the version we have in front of us, I'm comfortable supporting. So I don't know why it couldn't go back to the drawing board and then an improved version based off the questions today. The comments from the public couldn't then come back to us and then that's our involvement. I totally get your point, but I think that's short selling us a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think that the point is maybe it shouldn't have come today, right? There should have been more work that should have been done before it came here. So if we, you know, look at it that way, I mean, because I, I, I was all with you about hosting a public meeting and I'm still good to do that, so, but, I, but I, I think is that our responsibility or is that there's a better process that should have happened before it got here? I think that's right. That's what you're saying. Well and I don't know that you want us directing administrative staff on the better process. Sure. And I mean, I, I mean, I think that's what you're saying, right? So you, you either have the planning commission starting to direct administrative staff, which it doesn't sound like you want that, or the task force says, okay, we, we've heard the input. We're, we're going to take it. We're going to take it through a key stakeholder process. You do whatever you want, have all the leniency that you want, and then bring it back. I mean, I, I, those are kind of the two I avenues. Mean, and I, I think since the mayor commissioned this, that you have to go back to him to say what was said tonight from the stakeholders through and from the public, and then let him decide which way to go with it. So, so since he commissioned this to happen. You guys made one good point, though, that I think we need to state here, though, is that regardless of what the next path forward is, because James has obviously put a, a ton, ton of, work of work on this, yes. whatever the next path forward is, there is a burden on us to read and understand before the meeting. Agreed. <laughs> Just so yeah. can we get it, not yeah. like a few days before, can we get it 30 days before? Yeah. And it also go out to the public for them to have a month to read it before so we could it comes to us. Maybe two meetings out, like not 30-day yeah. yeah. turnaround, not the next Me meeting, but maybe two meetings Can out. Can we table it and send it back to the task force? Yeah, I mean, y'all okay. absolutely so can table it, yeah. I'm willing yeah, to make a motion test. if you're ready for one, right? I, I don't know where it would go otherwise. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if it's, if it's tabled, I don't, I don't know where it would, where, I think where would it go. Okay. My input is that maybe your motion needs to have some very specific of what we want before it comes back. We don't really care how it gets there. You know what I mean? Leniency on that, but. I'll, I'll throw out a shot and I will accept amendments to my motion. <laughs> Reviews. <laughs> Reviews. Okay, so I will make a motion to table amendment to the Conway Zoning Code 1301 to overhaul existing Conway sign code for further consideration by the task force with consideration of the questions asked today, the concern heard from the public, and there's, I'm sure there's a better way to say this, but uh, further inclusion of uh, impacted parties to the changes. Second. Yeah. Can, can we add and release to the public at least 30 days before the next public hearing? That might put it two meetings, but I'm all for that. So yes, I accept the you. amendment. Okay. All right. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Uh, Just again, James, thank tabled. you for the work. I mean, uh, yeah. items tabled. <laughs> so items tabled. 